previous video I got the base plate assembled I welded on the side cheeks um, as you can see I've only welded it from the back so there's only weld running along the back of the the plate and if you've done any welding you'll know that if you put a, a welding on one side of a join like this it will have a tendency to pull the um, the plate back so as the weld cools it tends to shrink and it uh, ends up uh, pulling the the plate back and you end up with a, an angle that uh, you didn't intend so I knew that was going to happen so I started off with these plates forward at the top about a millimeter that's about what I expected them to move by and sure enough they did they ended up almost completely vertical it's not critical but they are within about 0.1 millimeter um, top to bottom from being uh, perpendicular to the base plate so that works out fairly well um, as you can see it's all painted and it's ready to start reassembly I did fit a brass um, grounding terminal at the back and the first step in getting this put together is to put the rails on so I'll attach the rails I'll get them adjusted so that um, they are the same distance at the right hand side as they are the left so that they don't nip up the carriage as it slides along and uh, also make sure they are the right height um, right to left above the base plate so the um, torch doesn't uh, go up or down as it moves across the, uh, the travel. So I'll get those rails in place and we'll go from there. I fitted and adjusted the rails so the carriage now moves nice and freely. So the next thing I need to do is refit the motor and the electronics have wired it up now. It's just a simple um, circuit I showed. In fact, I've modified it very slightly. The controller didn't uh, work quite the way I expected it to. I hadn't really looked at it previously. So uh, when I did look at it, um, I needed to make a very small change to the wiring diagram. I'll show you that later. But uh, for now, I'll get it bolted in place and uh, we'll see what happens. Before I finish fitting the motor, I thought I'd show you the brackets I made for the end stop and home position micro switches. This is held in place with two of the uh, motor mount screws and the belt runs between this and as I said the top switch is hit by the carriage and the bottom switch is hit by the stop that goes on the belt. So this just bolts in place and um, it's wired up to the wires you can see dangling out to the back there. Just got some test switches on there at the moment but they will be wired to these two switches. So I'll get this bolted in place. So I've got the motor fitted, I fitted the drive belt I've got the electronics hooked up, got a battery fitted, just got a couple of test micro switches fitted at the moment to make it easier to test but these switches would normally be these two switches here uh, but just so we don't have to wait for the carriage to travel all the way I want to be able to test this without the danger of it smashing into the end stop if they don't work. So uh, we'll uh, get this tested, got the speed turned down and if we put it into its cut mode the carriage should start moving to our left. So let's give that a go. Fingers crossed. And the speed should be controllable with the parts. So I should be able to turn this down. And up. And these are standard motor gearboxes. So they come in a whole range of different uh, speeds and ratios and voltages. So if I want this to go any faster or slower, I can just swap out the motor gearbox for a different version. Okay, so now in the cut mode, um, the uh, plasma cutter should have automatically been turned on. We'll try that later. Um, but now one of these two micro switches, not quite sure which one, should stop the carriage when, and it should act as the end stop. That's the bottom of the two switches normally. So I'll try that one, and that has indeed stopped. I also heard the relay drop out. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera. But that click is the relay inside the box um, that normally activates or deactivates the plasma cutter. So it does sound like it's working. So we're under speed control during the cut, but what I wanted was for it to run at full speed irrespective of the pot setting when we put it into the uh, return mode, that's with the switch to the right. So it should now run at full speed to our right, which it is in fact doing. And the other micro switch should stop this. This is with the home switch. So 
so that is indeed working. Okay, I'll get the turn it off. I'll get the um, proper switches wired up and get the box fitted onto the back of the panel, and then we'll give it a proper test and see if it's doing what it's supposed to. Okay, so we'll try and give it a dry run. I haven't got the plasma cutter uh, connected at the moment, but we do now have the um, end stop micro switches uh, fitted. And what we should be able to do now is put this into the uh, return to home position. It should drive back to the start and hopefully stop without crashing into the uh, mechanical end stop. So we'll try that. And it does drive back at uh, full speed all the time, irrespective of the speed pot setting. And it has successfully driven back to the home position and stopped, which is what it should do. Didn't hear the relay click in, which is good. It uh, shouldn't uh, have the plasma cutter on when it's returning. Uh, I've scribed a line on the base plate, you probably can't see it, um, which is the start of cut. That's where I want to start the material cutting. I don't want it to start directly underneath the um, plasma nozzle because I don't want it starting the cut above the material. I want to kind of start the uh, plasma cutter and then have it enter the material. Um, but I have set the end stop position just to test it. So again, I'm not sure if you can see this, there's a line scribed on this end stop uh, block. I've got it lined up uh, roughly where I want the, uh, the gun to stop. So we'll try putting it into its cut direction. It should now be under speed control as well. And it is going the right way. Let's check we can vary the speed. And we can. And it should stop when it gets to the end of the plate, the test plate. And it has done. Okay, so that seems to be working and I did also hear the relay uh, click in and out. So that seems to be working and assuming it's wired up correctly, I should now be able to connect the plasma cutter through the control lead. Connect up our power and air from the plasma cutter and we should be able to do our first test cut. So I'll get this uh, set up, get the plasma cutter connected and we'll see if this actually works. Okay, I've got the plasma cutter connected and set up. It's not set up ideally for this thickness material. I've just set some arbitrary uh, values. It should cut through. It's three millimeter mild steel, so it'd be fairly easy to uh, cut through this. It's our first cut, I haven't tried this yet, so I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. Pretty sure the plasma cutter should work fine haven't tried this torch before. Now I have swapped out the tip for the shorter version. If you recall I said that the longer tip is when I'll be cutting through the, um, the slot in the base. Um, it'll work fine. There is enough travel on here for this thickness material but I thought I might as well put in the, um, uh, the tip length I'd normally be using. So I've got the torch in the home position, got the end stop way off the end of the material so it's not going to stop too soon. I want to make sure we cut all the way through this first run so uh, not quite sure how we're going to go. Got the speed set to an arbitrary position. Don't, haven't actually worked out what the uh, settings are for travel speed yet. In theory with this gearbox and motor we should have anything from zero up to about 30 inches per minute and as I said I can swap out the motor gearbox if I want to. So uh, without further ado, incidentally I also got the air set for three seconds so when the torch shuts off through the control cable the air will continue for three seconds and it will help cool the torch down. Okay so uh, let's get started, not quite sure how well you'll be able to see this, not sure how the camera will react to the plasma cutting but uh, let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay, I'll let it travel through to its end stop. The lights went dim incidentally. I've got a battery operated uh, floodlight so you can see what I was doing. It just happened to run out of battery <laughs> as this got to its end of travel, but uh, don't worry, didn't blow any fuses or anything. Um, hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna get a glove and uh, pick up the material. It will be hot of course, so I don't want to uh, grab hold of that. 
So here's the bit we cut off. So it's a very nice straight cut. It's got too much uh, slag on the back. Um, so the settings aren't right on the plasma cutter, obviously. Um, but it is cutting very nicely. It's got the piece of material off the machine. So, yeah, very nice very slight amount of cleaning up and we'd have a very nice cut clearly it's very nice and straight and with a few tweaks of the plasma cutter settings we'd have a very nice clean cut there and as i said the amount of cleaning up now for this would be minimal you know 10 seconds with a flap disc and this would be um, perfect in fact i'll try that i won't do it on camera i'm just going to get a flap disc I'm going to give it um, literally 10 seconds and see how this looks when I'm done. So you wait here. Okay, it's actually near five seconds, so very quickly cleaned up. Very nice clean cut. There's hardly any surface. Normally you get ripples when you do uh, plasma cutting, especially when you do it by hand, which is the, um, the purpose of making this machine. But uh, even after just a few seconds with a flap disc, this is almost completely flat and uh, I'm very pleased with this it should make life a lot easier if I want to cut pieces out um, I can uh, we'll give it one more try and see how it comes out so return it to its home position put our material into place Okay, and we'll try cutting again. I'll try changing a, a cut speed on this. We'll try that again. Second cut, even cleaner, so I've turned up the speed, so it was the same settings on the plasma cutter, just travelling a bit fast, it was going too slow before, and um, again, very nice clean cut. Torture set a bit low, it did catch as it went in, there's a burr on the end of this, I didn't clean off with the uh, flap disc, so it did catch as it started to uh, do the cut, push it across a little bit, but uh, it dropped down and uh, carried on with the cut quite nicely and it's not particularly hot so again very nice clean cut doing exactly what I wanted okay so that's it for this project if you do want to see more of this sort of thing I do quite a lot of builds like this uh, various jobs to do repairs that sort of thing and quite often I find myself making machines like this sometimes for fun sometimes to fulfill a particular requirement but if you do want to see more of this sort of thing leave a comment and um, if you do want to build one of these I strongly advise it they are um, useful additions to any workshop something I should have done a long time ago I've been cutting with uh, the plasma cutter for I don't know, 15 years or more and uh, doing it by hand it really would have saved me a lot of time um, using this not so much in the cutting but certainly in the cleaning up afterwards and being able to cut small slivers of material also is quite useful and having this uh, supported um, on both sides of the cut is quite beneficial and it uh, also means I can relax put the material in and uh, step back and wait for it to finish the cut and it's especially on long cuts if it's like 500 mil or a meter long I can get fairly tedious trying to do a straight cut and trying to keep it as clean as possible and obviously with this I can just sit back and let it do uh, the cut on its own so that's it for this series hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll be getting back to the electronic repairs fairly soon